بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear viewers, welcome to you all to our regular weekly show, Islam and Life. I'm your host, Raju Ali, once again in front of you, live. I'm very delighted to be in front of you because today, after a long time, we had our honorable guest, the Vice Principal of Jamia Islamia, Birmingham, Sheikh Faizul Haq Abdul Aziz, here again with us in Ikra Bangla studio. Today, let's welcome him with a warm heart and with a pleasure mind and today we'll discuss about the experience he had because he performed the Holy Hajj this year. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sheikh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Allah, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah Sheikh, I'm very happy to see you once again. Barakallah fiqh. <laughs> because um, you performed this year's Hajj. Alhamdulillah. 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 You prayed for all of us. Of course I did. And I would like to invite you once again to our today's show as uh, we missed your presence. Allahu Akbar. Barakallah fiqh. But uh, not only the we, I think the whole audience, they missed your presence. Barakallah. I miss but everybody as well. Yes. Zakallah <laughs> khairan oh, yeah. And uh, before our today's topic, we choose a topic today which is very important. Dear viewers, we choose a topic today which is very relevant to our today's, our current world right now. We choose a topic is humanity for Rohingyas. Before going to the topic, we'll discuss about it. We'll take questions from you. The n number will be given at the screens and we'll do the Facebook Live so you can participate if you are uh, going somewhere or coming, from, coming somewhere to home. You can participate. Before that, I would like to know about the experience of Hajj and also what as a Muslim we should do after performing Hajj to make sure that our belief is strong. With further delay, let's welcome to our Sheikh once again to give his remark about the Hajj and after Hajj. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Please. Barakallah fiqh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. ومن تبعهم ودعا بدعوتهم وسلك مسلكهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما uh, Respective viewers, my beloved brothers and sisters May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his peace and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his blessings upon all of us wherever we are and wherever we are watching this program from. As Brother Raju Ali has said, and this is from the uh, bottom of his heart that he has missed me and the audience they have missed me. My brothers and my sisters, I have missed everybody as well. We have become like a family, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Iqra TV has advanced, mashallah, globally uh, in Europe, in America, in Canada, and uh, online as well from all over the world, alhamdulillah. People uh, uh, watch Iqra TV. And once I remember last year, I said in the anniversary of Iqra TV that uh, uh, it is the family channel, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. because uh, everybody sit together and watch Iqra TV's program because in Iqra TV uh, the message of peace, the message of Islam is conveyed in a very beautiful way in many different languages. So Iqra has become a TV of the uh, family, it has become a family channel, alhamdulillah. So therefore I have missed all my family members, uh, i.e. the viewers of Iqra TV, the support of, or supporters of Iqra TV and the uh, donors of Al Khair Foundation, everybody, alhamdulillah. But alhamdulillah my brothers and my sisters uh, in the uh, holy place of Makkah Makarrama and uh, in Medina al Munawwara and all the places of Hajj. Alhamdulillah, I have remembered uh, all my viewers, all my brothers and my sisters and the entire Ummah, Alhamdulillah. My brothers and my sisters, uh, as you can see on the screen, today's topic we're going to discuss about uh, uh, humanity for Rohingya. And I don't know how much, uh, to be honest, Brother Raju, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to talk about this topic because it's such a horrific situation. It's such a, a sad situation. It's such a, uh, uh, well, well, I have no words to it, be it actually uh, describe. I, I, I should say, it's only make, make our 
our eyes wet. It that's also true. make our that's hearts true. wet. That's true. That's, that's true. true. Because yeah. I think it's bleeding inside our I heart. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really glad that you have uh, chosen this topic just to bring awareness to our viewers that what's going on actually and what can we do with regards to the brothers and the sisters and the victims of uh, Rakhine uh, uh, province of uh, Myanmar and the Rohingya Muslims. Um, so I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants me the ability. But to be honest, uh, throughout the journey of Hajj, uh, even though I tried my level best to uh, avoid social media and to be devoted into worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but because of the, uh, of the attachment with the Muslim Ummah, sometimes I do is to actually open my Facebook and my WhatsApp. And when I used to see this uh, horrific situation and the brutality and the uh, ethnic cleansing and the, uh, and the, and the killings and na'udhu billahi min zalik, may Allah protect uh, the brutality, I don't think uh, the eyes have ever seen before. We have heard about uh, uh, Mongolians, we have heard about the Tatars, and we have heard about the tyrants who went before. But uh, we never knew these uh, uh, tyrants still do exist in the 21st century modern world. But uh, the world has shown, the, uh, the, 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 the tyrants have shown their actual face, that uh, it wasn't the tyrants who have just went past in the history. In the modern day and, uh, day and age, there are t still tyrants who exist and who actually have no love and no respect for humanity at all. They are the, uh, they are the blood mongers, you can call them. They are the blood suckers, they are the killers, and they are the uh, ethnic uh, um, um, uh, cleansing uh, mind masters of the, uh, of the humanity in the 21st century modern world. So uh, as you said, like uh, the remarks regarding the Hajj. So when, in the three weeks I pass, passed in Makkah al-Mukarramah and in Al-Madinat al-Munawwara and uh, uh, during the season of Hajj in the Holy Land. So this thing always kept in my mind and it came into my mind and I always thought that uh, what has happened to the humanity, Allahu Akbar. We call ourselves that we are the people of um, the love and harmony, we are the people of peace and tranquility, and we are the people of human rights, and we are the people to provide human dignity and respect. But when it comes to the uh, uh, ethnic cleansing, like it came in the early 90s in Bosnia, in Kosovo, and uh, now in uh, uh, Rohingya, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 one of the province of uh, the My Myanmar, the ex-Burma, so where is the humanity and where is the respect of the humanity and um, where is the value of the humanity have gone? And above everything, uh, we, we talk about women's rights, women's rights, women's rights. Who are the most of the victims? As you have seen the footages, the videos, and our beloved brother, the one of the uh, t head of the um, uh, uh, relief yeah. team of the Al Khair Foundation, brother Masoom, when he contacted me yesterday and he sent me some of the, and he tagged me on the Facebook as well, and he sent me some of the pictures on the on the Facebook. So I wasn't on uh, touch with him. Subhanallah, he the pictures and the and the video footages and the things you see on Facebook and the social media uh, subhanallah it's, it's just unbearable you can't you can't think that can human actually do this thing to another human because of this kind of images and footage I reduced my activity at the social media I, I, I many past, people past did two, three many weeks, people did I didn't use it's no more than one hour for the whole three weeks time or four weeks time because I can't bear them. I there can't bear them because I know I'm not a child, but mm -hmm. still I can bear that's their true, footage. That's true. Anyone who has a heart, to be honest, and anyone has who has respect and uh, love for the humanity cannot actually bear these kind of footages. It's, it's just unbelievable that the whole world, the authorities of the world, the powerful authorities of the world, everyone is just the bystanders and everyone is just watching and no one is preventing it. Whereas the Burma is not a very big country that no one can say anything to it, that is a superpower, it's going to destroy the world or something like that. It's nothing like that. But it's just like everyone is just 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 zip their mouth and just watching it that all these millions of people are getting ethnic clean and then they're, they're getting clean they're getting, getting um, uh, massacred and they're getting butchered and they're pushed back out of their country into their water into the lakes into the rivers and then finally they are getting pushed back to Bangladesh as well so in this uh, uh, three weeks of my stay, my brothers and my sisters in Makkah al-Mukarramah, alhamdulillah, as far as Makkah al-Mukarramah is concerned, Medina Munawara is concerned, we cannot describe that. It's, the, it's, the, it's beyond the imagination, the spirituality there, the blessing there, the barakah there, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. It's just, it's just unbelievable how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his mercy. So with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we went for hajj and alhamdulillah, 
we had a pleasant stay in uh, in in uh, in Makkah al mukarramah uh, I went with a group called Holy Mokkators, Alhamdulillah, the brothers and the, uh, the, uh, the brothers who are engaged with that group and the uh, uh, brothers who take uh, the hujjaj from this group, mashallah, they were, they were very nice and kind and very helping brothers, mashallah. So we stayed uh, very close to Al Haram Al Makkiyah Sharif, very close to the sacred mosque in Makkah Al Mukarramah, and we had the opportunity, Alhamdulillah, to go very uh, um, uh, every day to perform all the five daily prayers in Makkah Al Mukarramah. As far as uh, uh, one of the great remarks is concerned, which everybody shares, is uh, nothing new. I'm not just saying I am the only unique one which I, ha I have experienced and none the other people have experienced, is that uh, as soon as you go there, you feel uh, peace and tranquility that you are in the in the holy land and you are close to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the attachment so the attachment to the Kaaba to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is in Makkah al-Mukarramah that actually gives you the peace and the tranquility as soon as you see the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah uh, that your heart is totally attached to that house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and automatically you start uh, shedding tears automatically that uh, this is the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's there for millenniums it's there for so many millenniums from the time of Adam alayhi salatu till uh, the, through the time of Noah through the time of Ibrahim through the time of Musa Isa up to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa still exist the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you think that Subhanallah Malik al Quddus, a house only made from the blocks. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected that house. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran that, Inna awwala baytin wudi'a lil nas, lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen. Verily, the first house which was invented for the entire humanity, which remains, which lies in Makkah al Mukarramah. Lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen, which is full of blessings and which is full of guidance for the entire world Allahu Akbar okay. so the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is full of blessings and it is uh, the entire house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is full of guidance for the entire humanity so as soon as you see that as soon as you attend there and as soon as you cite the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the entire uh, uh, um, uh, presence of yours becomes emotional that you are in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and actually the house of Allah which you really dream to see in your lifetime it's in front of you you can actually see it you can actually touch it it's there in front of you subhanallah so that is the feeling which makes a person really close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, that is a, a, such a such a great feeling that uh, even the even, even, even the great writers people who are great orators people who are very much of the uh, of the uh, um, expert in the literature I think uh, 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 for them as well it's going to be difficult there will be in shortage of words in order to accept express that attachment when a person has, when a brother or a sister has, when they have uh, sighted or when they see the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of them. Actually, sometimes you think that, is it real? That I am, uh, am I really standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house? Am I really viewing it? Am I really watching it? Am I really touching it? Am I, is it like sometimes you start thinking of yourself that am I, am I really real? You start doubting sometimes that am I really in the front of, in the in front of the house of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So this is one of the great uh, remarks this everybody is, uh, has. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, just, no just to say that as you mentioned, am I be am I am I there? Am I there? <laughs> so this is the experience. Not only you mentioned. I think I had this. Subhanallah. Even, even, <laughs> even uh, this is a very things like we cannot believe our own 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 presence. Own presence. That's true. So That's true. Okay. This is the present because it's it's it's, it's a spirit. It's a, it's a spiritual journey there, so mm -hmm. I think. So this is the, uh, one of the first uh, uh, remarks, my brothers and my sisters, I can mention that you are so close and so attached to, the, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to your Lord, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing you have is there, the subhanallah, people from all over the world. There are 228 states in the world. 200 and around 228 countries in the world and I think there are people from all of the countries you see people from the white background from the brown background from the black background uh, from the far east from the far west from the north from south everywhere subhanallah you see uh, you see muslims and uh, people are together and they are uh, like brothers and sisters a uh, universal brotherhood subhanallah such a great such a great number of humanity is attended in one place in one town 
and subhanallah you behamdihi there is no fighting going on there is no killing going on there is no na'udhu billah abusing going on there is no uh, harming going on and all in one town in one city when I think like, uh, uh, for example, uh, more than two million people just stuck in one place, in one town, in one city, the traffic should be jam. Okay? The, the wheel shouldn't be spinning. Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. But Subhan al Malik al Quddus, as soon as you go around uh, one kilometer out of Makkah al Mukarramah, everything is normal. People have their normal life, the traffic is flowing. Is that the crowd is only in Makkah, only in by the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the sacred, uh, sacred masjid, uh, Al Masjid al Haram. So when you see that, that the universal brotherhood, brothers and sisters from all over the place, and they're all in one tune and one, uh, one voice and one slogan, which is Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. That wa Allah I am present. Wa Allah I am present. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Wa Allah I am present. You have no partners. Wa Allah I am present. Allahu Akbar. So labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. Verily praise, bounties and the kingdom belongs to you. Allahu Akbar. Subhan. This is such a great way of confession of the servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. Verily the uh, praise, verily the bounties, the praise we have uh, and we praise anyone. Actually the praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the uh, designer of everything uh, uh, and everyone. Therefore the actual praise uh, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if we, and if, uh, if we pray something, praise somebody or something, we are actually praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the designer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the maker and the planner of the thing or of that person. Therefore actual praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the bounties and all the ni'mah we have all provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even a piece of bread as well, that is actually provided to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sent down the rain, then the, uh, the farmer, he plowed the land, and then he planted the seed, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grew the uh, plant, and then from there Allah ta'ala uh, took out the weeds, and from there uh, they, they, they were harvested, and then they were taken to the uh, to the to, to the uh, manufacturing places and then it was made bread and then the shopkeeper got the bread and then I went to the shop and I brought it it was actually processed and it went long through a long process it was all given the strength was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the talent was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore any bounties we have the credit goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because uh, behind all the mechanism is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it came into existence so uh, with the hujjaj the pilgrims they say labbaik la sharika lak labbaik inna alhamda wa ni'mat verily all the praise and all the bounties belong to you and of course wal mulk and the kingdom as well wa allah belongs to you therefore the entire universe belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the master of the whole of the universe allah owns it allah created it badi'u samawati wal ard allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the entire universe without any pre example it was the master plan only uh, uh, created and planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La sharika lak. And then the pilgrims proclaims that to Allah, you have no partner. You mean? So that is the second remark a person has that subhanallah, such a big gathering of the humans from all languages. Subhanallah, amazing. When you walk past, you hear so many different languages people are speaking. Some is Arabic, some is Turkish, some is Vietnamese, some is Russian, some is Chinese, Subhanallah, some is English. So Subhanallah, you're going past and then you're hearing all these languages. And also the different forms of every language. There you go, different form of all the languages. And the amazing thing is that if you ever go to the markets, the shopkeepers from there, they know all the languages. Amazing. One person in front of you, he speaks Arabic, he speaks Urdu, he speaks English, he speaks Turkish, he speaks Chinese as well, Malaysia and Indonesia, subhanallah. And you just stand there, then, oh my Allah, is this guy a big scholar or something? <laughs> but actually, he has learned it from the people. They come and they go to the shop and everyone is free speaking their own language. There is no barrier at all. Everyone speaks their own language and the people, they try to understand their languages. Subhanallah. So this is the universal brotherhood that people from all walk of life, all background, all race and color and all uh, different languages, they come together and they live their life uh, 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 in a peaceful uh, manner and in a love and uh, in a harmony uh, for all the days they stay in Waqqat al mukarrama and the third remark, my brother uh, Rajwali, uh, which a person uh, actually can see and physically he can experience that, that subhanallah, a land, 
مکہ مکرمہ is a land allah explains that in the quran ghayra zi zara a land which doesn't grow any plant at all all black mountains around it's like burnt it's not rocks. even the grassy mountains it's no. the stone mountains stone the rocks big rocks, big rocks, rocks. Big, big and they are like subhanallah proper black as if they are burnt no sign of any kind of uh, 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 life. life there subhanallah but in that town, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides and fulfills the needs of everybody. Not even a single pilgrim you'll find, not even a single haji you'll find, that they have their uh, basic needs and they could not find that in Makkah al-Mukarramah. Subhan al-Maliki al quddus Huge population. Makkah Mukarrama is the one of the oldest city of the world. And on top of that, more than 2 million people. Just suddenly, for two months, they arrive in Makkah Mukarramah. More than two million people. There is never ever any shortage of gas. There is never ever any shortage of electricity. There never ever the biggest bounty of Allah, which is water. What? Neither in the hotel, neither Subhanallah Zamzam is something else. I'll talk about Zamzam as well. But even the normal uh, water which people have in their uh, hotel, Subhanallah, there is never ever any shortage of it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then on top of that, food and then uh, fruits, and then subhanAllah, all the basic fundamental needs, you say, Allahu Akbar, this is definitely not the human's job. This is definitely the job of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised in the Quran, yujba ilayhi thamaratu kulli shay. That Makkah Mukarramah is that city, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that we have made it haraman amina, a sacred, a sacred and a peaceful haram. Uh, a respected place uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah ta'ala has said yujba ilayhi thamaratu kulli shay that all the things the best of all the things will be taken into Makkah al-Mukarramah Allahu Akbar so everything everything is uh, taken into Makkah al-Mukarramah either by the food or by the fruits subhanallah you see and because the, the, the uh, region is very hot sometimes we had the uh, uh, weather up to around 46 degrees Celsius. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah Malik al Because it's, it's the hot region, you sweat a lot. Subhanallah. Therefore, you drink a lot and you eat a lot as well. Because everything gets digested so quickly. Compared to England, for example, because it's a cold country and if somebody has a less movement, he doesn't uh, do a lot of exercise, then Subhanallah, he doesn't get uh, hungry. But in there, because by going to prayers and coming back, because remember that there are more than 2 million people on the street and you are going through them so going through and coming out from there it's a long walk the masjid al haram by itself is a big walk allah mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's massive it's huge subhanallah Mo around more than three million people can uh, actually fit within the uh, masjid al haram allah now you can imagine how big and how huge it is the new extension they have made so once i stood by the main door the main uh, gate of the new extension and i looked at the kaaba uh, according to my estimation, the distance is between the, the distance, same as the distance between the Safa and Marwa, which is, I think, around half a kilometer. So if from the door, just to reach to the Kaaba, the house of Allah, if there is a half kilometer, you can put that in a radius. How much is that? Subhanallah Malik al -Quddus. So, uh, subhanallah, you've become tired, you feel thirsty, and you feel hungry as well. But subhanallah, there is all the fundamental needs are there uh, to fulfill all your needs. Whatever you want to eat, whatever you want to drink, and everything tastes so tasty that subhanAllah, Amen. you just feel like eating, okay? But this is the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings everything in there. So there are many remarks, uh, Brother Raju, uh, there's many remarks. You can talk, in fact, actually, we can have a whole one hour, 30 minute show on this. Uh, we cannot actually uh, fulfill everything. But these are the three main things. Of course, there's some, um, some more as well. That for First one a person is that he feels so attached and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord which a person worships without seeing when he sees the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's so much into attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, universal brotherhood. And number three, the blessings a person has and he witnesses and she witnesses is, is, is unremarkable. So these are the great things, inshallah, uh, will continue as well later. It's time for a short break. Allow no problem. Us to go for it. Dear viewers, we learn lots of things. We learned about the attachment of the holy city Makkah and the Hajj. We'll continue this topic and also we'll put some light on our today's topic, Rohingya issues about the humanity and Rohingyas. So please bear with us and also we'll take calls from the next segment. The number will be given at the screen. Please stay with us. We'll come back shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to the second segment of our this week's Islam and Life. We are discussing about a very important issues. Also, we are learning some of the aspect of Hajj because our Sheikh, the Honorable Vice Minister of Jami Islam of Birmingham, Sheikh Faizul Haq Abdul Aziz, just performed his Hajj from Holy City of Makkah al Mukarramah. He's sharing his experience and we are learning from his experience. From this segment, we'll take your calls. The number will be given at the screen. Let me say the number by, by it's 0207 0960405. The number will be given at the screen and you can call us and put your questions forward regarding the issues or any other issues you are having with your life. Without further delay, let's get back to our Sheikh and learn as, as he performed his Hajj and what as a Haji or Hujjaj, what we should do after like com com uh, completing the performance we did at Hajj. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, thank you very much for your remark earlier at the first segment. You mentioned about uh, your journey throughout the past three weeks for the Hajj. Now, as, as you know, I mentioned to the audience that what we should do as a Hujjaj, that to complete the whole journey, it's not the end we finished our performed our Hajj, or it's just the end of the month of Jil Hajj, it's finished there. As a Muslim, as a believer, we should continue our journey, the spiritual journey, the journey to, as a, as a, to make our belief firmly strong. Mm -hmm. So what we should do and how can we do that? Barakallah, <laughs> mashallah. Jazakallah, brother Raju. Mashallah, very nice that uh, after performing Hajj, uh, what should be uh, the lifestyle of a person and how should a person be firm on his good deeds and how he should, uh, uh, or he or she, they should uh, uh, proceed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and my sisters, after performing Hajj, uh, the, one of the advice which the scholars they always give is that is that uh, Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah has given us the ability to perform Hajj, uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept. Uh, with regards to the uh, virtue of uh, Hajj, our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that. Uh, أَمَّنْ حَجَّ لِلَّهِ فَلَمْ يَفْسُقْ وَلَمْ يَرْفُثْ رَجَعَكَ يَوْمٍ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ That when a person performs hajj for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and within that hajj a person uh, doesn't do any uh, anything, doesn't commit any sins and doesn't do anything against the uh, morality then this person will return home كَيَوْمٍ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ like he is the newborn baby as if his mother has given birth to him today so as soon as a person performs hajj all his sins are forgiven he's uh, uh, doing a refresher he is starting his life again a new start which he is free from sins all the sins are free uh, forgiven and he has a new record Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to hajj he has said that al hajju ashurun ma'lumat fa man farada fihinna al hajja fa la rafatha wa la fusuqa wa la jidala fil hajj that hajj is performed in known months which are shawwal zul qada and the first 10 days of zul hijja whoever makes hajj compulsory upon him on the uh, on these days fa la rafatha wa la fusuqa wa la jidala fil hajj there shouldn't be anything immodest there shouldn't be any committing sins and there shouldn't be any kind of fighting or argument in the hajj so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is giving us the guideline that how a person should be performing hajj. No committing sins, no immodesty, and no fighting. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving us the reward of that. That if a person refrains from these three things, what will happen to him? Raja'aka yawmin waladathu ummu. He will return his house as if that his mother has given him birth today i.e. he is free from all the sins so once we have my brothers and my sisters performed hajj and we are free from all the sins now the the ball is in our court what we meant to do is now try our level best not to commit any sin not to make our records bad not to fulfill our records with the sins with the effect of the sins and once allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cleansed our hearts once allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cleaned our uh, our records from all the sins now is our level best we should try our utmost level best in order to keep our record clean free from sins and be on the right path obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala away from shaitan and away from the inspiration of shaitan and be obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be firm on the good deeds to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like for example in the world liberties as well, if somebody has uh, a clean record, okay, 
uh, now whenever he goes for a uh, to a bank or to he applies for a job they always do a credit check on that person that is the uh, credit of that person is the credit record of that person is it clean or not if somebody has that clean subhanallah he tries his level best not to do anything which will spoil that which will make him a guilty person in front of the bank or in front of the uh, job authorities who will offer him the job. So everybody try their level best to keep that record as clean as possible. Nobody wants to be uh, recorded as a criminal or he or she, nobody wants to have any criminal offense uh, recorded on their records. So like physically we try our level best to keep that clean, spiritually as well, uh, the record which we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is clean after performing hajj, we should try our level best not to make it a mess again, not to fulfill it with the sins as far as um, uh, trying our level best is, that we try our level best to keep it as clean as possible. Because because my brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has took us for hajj. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven, forgiven our sins. Now, it is our duty to keep that clean, not to commit any sins, and always be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the, uh, the life after hajj, the, in one uh, very little uh, short uh, phrase, nutshell, is that be good, continue with the good deeds, Never ever commit any bad deeds and never ever try to be a lie of shaitan. Always be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If for any mistake anything happens, straight away repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make your connection strong with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and proceed with the good deeds. This is the best advice which I can think of after performing hajj. Jazakallah khairan Thank oh, yeah. you very much. I hope the audience will perform on that and Inshallah. they will continue the learning and the performing the Hajj's good deeds. So, Zakala Khan Sheikh, we'll Good now day. continue with the today's topic. It's, it's, it's a very, very, tragic. very <laughs> tragic. And yeah, it's very tragic. So, how could we define the things like what is happening there? How could, you, is, is there any definition? Allah is there? <laughs> My brother, as far as uh, uh, the topic is concerned, humanity for Rohingya, I think humanity doesn't remain anymore. I think the humanity has gone. Uh, one of the poet he says that uh, uh, the humanity has actually it was buried it is gone for a long time it, the, it, we only see the physical humans the actual human it has actually gone with regards to uh, what's happening in Rohingya uh, uh, the Rohingya people uh, I think Rohingya is the name of their tribe Try. okay and the place where they live in is called Rakhine okay it's a big province from uh, 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 current Myanmar the ex Burma which is close to the border of Bangladesh and it's a huge area it's a huge area these people who are victimized and killed uh, there now they are the native uh, settle, settlers of that area they were the native people of that area for past century like millennium more you than can a millennium. call that because they are the native people from yeah. there it's like Londoners okay London belongs to the Londoners okay England belongs to the English people okay so Birmingham belongs to the Brahmis so Rakhine belongs to the people of Rohingya they are the native people from there they are the people from there they speak the language they are the people from there now may Allah protect for so many decades actually there was a uh, ethnic cleansing going on ethnic cleansing genocide was committed that these people they need to be uh, the authorities there, they, uh, they are planning that they need to get rid of these people either uh, by killing them, either by uh, forcefully pushing them out of their place or whatever the case is, uh, they are taking them out of there. Now these Muslims, they were there for so many of the um, um, centuries, they were living there, they are the native people from there. And once upon a time when the uh, Usmani Khilafah was there, if I remember correctly, uh, once upon a time, it was under the ruling of the Islamic Khilafah, the Ottoman Empire, the Uthmani uh, Khilafah. It was, uh, that area was also in that uh, uh, Khilafah, under the Khilafah. Therefore, they are the uh, uh, people from there, they are the native people from there. Uh, but very sadly, these people, they were not recognized by the authorities of the Myanmar. The current Myanmar, because current they, Myanmar. They, they, they're not recognized as a citizen, it is even a citizen, though, but yeah. they, they had the representative at the House of Parliament. There you go, and, they had the they, M MPs. So how, if, if, yeah. if, if somebody is not the citizen, how can they be the representative of the citizens? 
and they were deprived from many of the basic fundamental needs. For example, they were only allowed to have education up to primary level, up to the year of five. They were not allowed to go for the secondary education, not for the college education, not for the higher education. A nation within the nation which was deprived of the basic fundamental needs which a person has as a, as a, as a, as a citizen of that country which uh, other people are sharing, the Rakhines and the Rohingya Muslims, they never had that. So they don't want them to grow up? They don't want them to grow up. They just want to uh, destroy them and destroy these people. They never had the, uh, the, the, any of the rights, of uh, any of the fundamental rights, such as medical rights, such as uh, the housing rights. They never had nothing. These people, they uh, tried, uh, strived, and they tried in their level best in order to survive. And they were just surviving, just surviving on the brink of surviving. But even the, on top of that, the authorities from there, they don't tolerate them. They want to kill them. And sometimes they just increase the killing. So sometimes, even not the major media catches that, like sometimes because of the nowadays we have the social media and because of the uh, uh, nowadays we have the latest uh, phones, because of that some people sometimes they do catch some images and this comes and they become viral in the social media and people know about it. Otherwise the ethnic cleansing is going on there for, you can call it for decades. They are deprived from everything and the, and the killings is going on. Now comes the question, where is the humanity nowadays? Where is the humanity? These people, not in hundreds, in hundreds of thousands, they've been killed, they've been butchered, they've been massacred, genocide was actually committed against them, and ethnic cleansing is going on. But where is the humanity now? How come nobody speaks about it? Many people and many news reporters, they are saying that uh, uh, actually there's a great plan is going in there uh, for many of the big, big fish of the world, i.e. big countries of the world. That that region, uh, that region, that land is, is, is very important, is very crucial. In terms of they can make growth and stuff they, of the region. That's it, yeah. So in that, in that case, there, 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 there are many plans from the neighboring China and the neighboring India, the great two countries uh, on, the other, on the both sides of uh, Myanmar, and they have a great interest in that. Many people they are saying in that in that land of Rohingya, there I are many say, of the. This is not our opinion. We learned it from the from, 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 from the, the newses and from stuff. The That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, whatever we can see on the see, newspaper, newspaper from there, yeah. we don't be there. So, similarly, m many of the people are saying that there is a lot of uh, natural resources are found uh, are they under the land of that uh, Rohingya Muslims. So many people want to have that and. Uh, and, uh, and, and, then, and then have the power on that. But obviously, if they are there, then obviously they will uh, demand for a share as well. So just destroy them and clean them. Many people, they are saying that uh, strategically is such a, such a nice place that it is close to many of the waters of the world. Many of the uh, oceans are attached to that. So if, if, if they are wiped out from there, so many of the, uh, many of the uh, world uh, trade uh, could, be, uh, could have their centers made in there and uh, people can do uh, trades from there. But the question is that if these people remain in there, what harm will they cause to the world trades? What harm will they cause to the advancement of the uh, natural resources that land has? It's like people cannot tolerate these people uh, uh, living in there who are the native people. It's like somebody comes to my house and forcefully takes me out and takes possession of my house. So the same happening is there as well, that kill them, okay, push them out, throw them into the sea, push them back to Bangladesh or whatever the case and we have to take control of that land. If these people, these poor people are remaining in there, then that's it. We cannot take the control of that land. This is what's happening. This is what I think, my brother, according to what I see on the, uh, on the media and the newspapers, this is what's going on in there, which is genocide and which is ethnic cleansing. So, so Sheikh, uh, so because of the discussion we are doing, so is it we can say that nowadays the, the humanity is not there we can say the business of a people 
The is whole it, purpose is, is money and business. Money and business. Even for making money, if I need to now the belief, people need to kill somebody and destroy the whole of the nation, people are doing it. Then what's the difference between the human and the other animals? Because other animals, they feed themselves <laughs> by killing others. By killing others. Same, same people are doing the same thing as well. People are doing the same thing as well. So how could we justify Allah that? Because there's no way to justify this. This is total oppression, total zulum. And with regards to Zulum, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Adhulmu dhulumatun yawm al qiyam. Anyone who does any dhulum, anyone who does any kind of oppression to another person in this world, anyhow, they will be brought to justice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's court on the day of judgment. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Adhulmu dhulumatun yawm al qiyam. The dhulum in the world, the oppression made in the world, it will be the source of darkness and oppression in the hereafter. So those people, anyhow, Anyone who does any kind of zulum unto other people, other weak nation, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be brought to justice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be facing their, uh, uh, their trials in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as you mentioned this hadith, does Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mention about that the victim should be Muslim? With regards to my brother, uh, as far as the Muslims are concerned, uh, Victim could be anybody. Anybody. Victim could be anybody. With regards to victim, it could be anybody. Islam does not look at the victim only based on their faith. Islam looks at the victim based on the humanity. That whoever it is, you are not allowed to victimize anybody. You are not allowed to oppress anybody. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanahu al-Malik al-Quddus, he even prevented anyone urinating into the hole of the ants. Can you imagine that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prevented any kind of oppression onto the animal. Uh, miraculously, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to understand the language of the, uh, of the animals as well. Once Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there, a uh, camel came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that camel uh, was moving its, uh, uh, its tongue and its lips, and it was making uh, funny sounds. Uh, and that was the, uh, the, the style the camel can actually express uh, its grief to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now miraculously, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to understand the language of the, uh, of the, uh, of the animals. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called his master. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the, your camel is saying that you take extra service from it, but you give less provision to it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said to the master that whenever, whenever you are traveling with your camel, whenever you are traveling with your animals, give them their due rights and then take the service from them. Allahu Akbar. So as far as doing something uh, wrong to animals are concerned, that is also uh, uh, not proven and that is not also not allowed. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has strictly prohibited that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has strictly prohibited that. Once uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going past, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam realized that one of the companions, he was actually was punishing one of his slaves. He was punishing one of his slaves. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called that sahabi, called that companion, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you know Allah has more power on you than you have on your servant, on your slave? Allahu Akbar. Allah has more power on you than you have on your on your, on, your, on, your, on your slave, Allahu Akbar. Upon hearing this, the Sahabi of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companion of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he actually freed his slaves. That SubhanAllah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying this. Uh, so as far as zulum is concerned, Allahu Akbar, zulum is concerned, it is not allowed for anybody, not only for Muslim, non-Muslim, anybody as humanity, we are not allowed to do any kind of zulum to anybody. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, many uh, places in the Holy Quran, in Allah la yuhibbu dhalimeen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the oppressors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like uh, uh, anyone who does zulum. Now what is zulum? Comes the question, what is, what is zulum? Literally zulum means, uh, in Arabic it says, وَضْعُ الشَّيْءِ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِ مَحَلِّهِ To put something in the wrong place. Normally people wear the watch on their wrist. Okay? This is the place for the watch. If I take this watch from my wrist, and if I put it on my ankle, this will be zulum with this watch. Because the watch meant to go on the wrist. It is made for the wrist. It is not made for the ankle. So if I take it off, and if I put it onto, uh, onto my ankle, that is the dhulm with this watch. وَضْعُ الشَّيْءِ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِ مَحَلِّهِ Now, 
when people have their rights and when these rights are not given to people this is zulm when people have the rights to reside in a land which they own and they are not allowed to reside in there they are forcefully killed and forcefully they are taken out that is zulm people have their rights as a citizen of a country to have the basic fundamental needs education health housing etc etc if people are deprived from these things then this is known as zulm now as far as the rohingya are concerned they are from every angle they are from every angle they are deprived from every angle they are deprived they have their uh, they have no uh, basic fundamental rights they have no education they have no health they have no shelter they have nothing to be honest and they are forcefully taken out of their countries therefore my brothers and my sisters what we can do for the rohingya muslims is is that uh, allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, when we look into their teachings i.e. the teachings of the quran and the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to our capacity within uh, uh, staying uh, within uh, by staying within the legal frameworks what we can do is that first of all we can make dua as far as dua is concerned is the most powerful weapon a muslim has prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that uh, ad dua wa salah al mu'min dua supplicating to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supplication to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the weapon of a believer in another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that uh, uh, la yaruddul qadra illa ad dua nothing actually changes the fate and the taqdeer of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except dua so dua is such a powerful element powerful weapon of a believer that it can actually change many of the things and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us the uh, command that for every little need and every greater need make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said even if your shoelace breaks even for that as well make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as those of us who can only see our brothers and our sisters they are getting victimized they are oppressed and they are uh, genocide is committed against them ethnic cleansing is going against them and they are forcefully uh, uh, taken out of their own land uh, they are pushed into the sea they are pushed into bangladesh uh, and the bordering uh, areas allahu akbar the first and the foremost we can do is make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh allah save these people from the uh, qiyama from the uh, from the uh, uh, judgment they are facing from the position they are facing from the brutality and the genocide and the ethnic cleansing they are facing oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them remember that my brothers and my sisters in the hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that al mu'minuna ka rajulin wahidin in ishtaka ainuhu ishtaka kulluhu in ishtaka rasuhu ishtaka kulluhu prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the entire muslim ummah is like one body the entire muslim ummah is like one body if one part of the body is in a pain the entire body feels the pain prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in ishtaka ainuhu ishtaka kulluhu in ishtaka rasuhu ishtaka kulluhu if the person has pain in the eye the entire body feels the pain if the person has a pain in the head he has a headache the entire body feels the pain so the entire muslim ummah is like one body it's like one body so wherever we see any any kind of muslim or even uh, at, take take it out of the human muslim take it to the humanity wherever we see any kind of any kind of problems any kind of brutality any kind of oppression is going on our sh- heart should be crying uh, for the uh, for the for, for the uh, humanity for example remember two years back when there was a big earthquake in in bhutan nepal in nepal nepal from this this same platform of uh, iqra tv from al khair foundation we raised hundreds of thousands of pounds and our brothers from al khair foundation they went to nepal and they served they were not muslims yeah and even even the last year the haiti the haiti the haiti as well uh, we went alhamdulillah from al khair foundation and from iqra tv the uh, the teams went and they supported so wherever this is the character of a muslim that wherever the humanity is in a in in a in, in a disaster wherever the humanity is in a problematic situation at that time we should be crying for the entire humanity and try our level best uh to uh, support the humanity sazakallah khairun sheikh thank oh, yeah, you very thank you. much uh i could
what could we say but we'll discuss about it more Inshallah. at the next segment because it's time for a short break we'll, we'll try to understand what's going on behind and how can as a Muslim as you mentioned we should do dua and also the other 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 elements, other, other, other elements of solving it dear viewers it's time for a short break once again please stay with us we'll continue about this topic and we'll try to learn more aspects of it Jazakallah khairan for being with us. See you after a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to you all to our third and final segment of this week Islam and Life. We are discussing before the break about the Rohingya issues and the humanity. We learn that any victims, despite of any their religion, their ethnicity, any victims will be treated equally. Any victims can 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 say or can can request the judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. We learn that we should not differentiate any any kind of victims as because the victims are the victims and we sh should stand with them at any how. We'll learn lots of things and we'll continue to discussion about things as a Muslim as we are far away from the land where the zulm, the, the, the oppression is going on. As a believer we should do make dua because dua is the weapon, the strongest weapon a believer can, can have. We should make dua for them, we should make sure that our, that, and not only the dua we are doing we are also doing some actions. As Ikra Bangla is doing the charity appeals regularly on the basis of Rohingyas, we try to get their basic needs but through your donations. So we'll try to discuss about this as a person, as a believer, as a human, what we should do more in terms of the charity, in terms of the extra deed we should do to make sure the victims are not victims anymore. And end of the operation. So without further delay, let's welcome our Sheikh, the, the guest, the Honourable Vice Principal of Jamia Islamia Birmingham, Sheikh Faizul Huq Abdul Aziz. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you Sheikh. Um, as we discussed before the break about the Rohingya issues, it, it, it's a very sad and tragic issues. You mentioned about the duas we should do. And not only duas, I'm very grateful to the audience of Ikra Bangla and Al Khair Foundations who are donating generously to support those victims of Rohingyas. That because we, we cannot offer the services within the Burma, within the Myanmar, but also we are trying to provide the services to Bangladesh because it's a neighboring country and the, the oppressor is pushing them within a different land where they do not have any kind of resources. So the donors are paying the donations and our team, especially the charity manager and, and the country manager over there, they are just pr doing their, their from the heart and doing the very toughest job. It's not very easy to think it's like, how can we do more donations to charity and what are the things we should do? MashaAllah, Barakallah, Jazakallah, MashaAllah. So, brothers and sisters, as far as uh, humanity for Rohingya is concerned and supporting the Rohingya uh, victims, brothers and sisters who uh, are actually there, the second thing what we could do is that, first of all, obvious, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala settles them into their land, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grants them their wealth and their land back, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the peace and tranquility, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala settle them once again with peace and tranquility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes all the burdens, all the difficulties and all the hardship from them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide those people who are oppressing them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the heart of those people who are oppressing them uh, that they shouldn't do uh, this kind of oppression uh, to the fellow uh, citizens of their own country. Second thing, my brothers and my sisters, uh, 
what we can do is that uh, obvious uh, as brother Rajwali has mentioned that uh, our team is there and we are donating and our audience are mashallah they have uh, responded mashallah immensely uh, to the calls uh, and to the uh, fundraising uh, uh, programs of Iqra uh, both of the Iqra channels to be honest Iqra Urdu and Iqra Bangla and uh, through online as well on uh, uh, and uh, uh, Al Khair Foundation and uh, subhanallah uh, it's, it's very impressing hearing that uh, one of the brother brother Rana just told me before the program started subhanallah that many people they are collecting their donation on their own will in their masjids in their private uh, sector in their family uh, um, uh, bonds and they're actually raising that money and bringing it to Iqra TV's office subhanallah either Iqra Urdu or Iqra Bangla or Al Khair Foundation office and many of them are collecting it on their own will and they are giving it into the account of Al Khair Foundation online or they personally going to the bank and putting inside the account uh, of Al Khair Foundation so this is a great uh, uh, response alhamdulillah Iqra TV both of the Iqra TV, Iqra Urdu and Iqra Bangla uh, and Al Khair Foundation has for his audience and his supporters. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, uh, uh, grant uh, um, uh, rewards, immense rewards to our viewers. Before I, I, I go to that, my brothers and my sisters, obvious, first of all, uh, we'll make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the victims of Rohingya and any, any other victims anywhere in the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everyone peace and tranquility. Second thing, my brothers and my sisters, uh, as we can do by staying within the legal framework, not to be extreme, not to go over the limit, not to do anything which is against the law of the land of our country, of England. Uh, by staying within the uh, uh, legal frameworks, what we can do is that we can contact our MP. We can contact our MP uh, and even in our local areas if there is a minister as well. Many of the MPs, they are ministers as well and they are voted by us. They are supported by us. We can make appointments with them. We can go to them. We can write letters to them. We can write letters to our own Prime Minister Theresa May. We can write uh, letters to our Foreign Secretary. We can write letters to our opposition leader, uh, Mr. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn. We can, any source we have, try to utilize that to bring that oppression to an end. These people, they are the native people of there. They are the people of that land. They belong there. Uh, that land belongs to them. There is no rights from anyone whosoever it is to push them out of their country. And what they are doing to them is totally brutality, genocide, ethnic cleansing, neither any religion nor any faith, neither any culture, neither any laws permits that. Neither United Nations, United Nations charters are there. The Geneva Convention is there. That everybody in this world, they have the freedom of practicing their faith, practicing their culture, and then living into their land and express the freedom of their living standards. Therefore, everybody has the basic fundamental needs. Anyone who is depriving them from their basic fundamental needs, they are the tyrants, they are the oppressors, and they should be brought to justice. And inshallah, my brothers and my sisters, we have that hope that as far as zulum is concerned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, amazing thing is that Allah tolerates kufr. Allah tolerates shirk. You may say, Sheikh, how is that? If a person commits shirk, which is the biggest sin, crime against Allah, Allah tolerates that. Allah doesn't kill the person who commits shirk. The consequences will be in the hereafter. But as far as the world is concerned, Allah, even Allah provides them more. Anyone commits kufr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with that in the hereafter. But just because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't destroy anybody. But as far as zulum is concerned, is such a thing, Allahu Akbar, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tolerate that. Anyone, any individual, any nation who do any zulum to anyone else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either today or tomorrow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely brought them to justice. You must know that the person who was behind all the ethnic cleansing and the genocide in Bosnia and Kosovo, he is facing the trial now. Okay, might be after 25 years, after 27 years, but the man who had blood on his both hands, he is brought to justice, and he is having the life sentence until his death. He will never be out of the jail prison.
So these people who are doing the unhuman uh, 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 oppression and uh, uh, brutality against these brothers and sisters, they will be brought to justice once in the world. If not, then obvious in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that a person who was killed, innocent person who was killed, he will go on the day of judgment under the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, his, uh, from his body the blood will be gushing out. The blood will be gushing out from the wounds which he, the oppressor actually hit him and killed him with. And he will hold the oppressor, the dalim, oppressor, and he will take the person to under the arch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will say, well, Allah, this person has oppressed me in the world without any rights. Allah, take revenge from him. Allah Akbar. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the revenge from that person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the due rights of that victim. Allah Akbar. So therefore, anyone who does anything, doesn't matter who it is, doesn't matter how powerful the person is and how powerful the regime is, there is a day to come, يَوْمَ يَقُومِ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When the entire humanity will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the victims will be given their rights. Prophet ﷺ has said how the rights will be given. Prophet ﷺ said, if in the world a goat with the horn has poked another goat which has no horn, Prophet ﷺ has said, the right of that victim goat will be given from this zalim, the oppressor goat which has victimized the other one. So therefore, as far as the rights of the victims are concerned, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely uh, give the rights. Therefore, in the hadith, Prophet ﷺ said, ittaqi da'wat al -madhloom. Beware of the curse of the oppressed person. Because the curse of the oppressed person, the dua against you from the oppressed person, it reaches the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, rapidly responds to the dua, supplication of the oppressed person. Walau ba'dahin. May not be cash, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will listen to the uh, calls and the supplication of the oppressed people. So my brothers and my sisters, second thing what we can do is that whatever uh, sources we have, uh, we can uh, use that in order to bring awareness to our local MPs, our ministers, and we can write letters to them, we can email them, we can personally meet them, and uh, uh, the, we can request them that what's going on is their duty actually we as uh, we as public as the voters is their duty to listen to us okay and and uh, 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 that uh, they raise the concern raise the issue and that they can look into the issue and with the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will be uh, it will be inshallah uh, dealt with because my brothers and my sisters as uh, as as humans as muslims whenever we see anything going on wrong we cannot just stay silent about it Okay, uh, I like this uh, 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 slogan, the, lo uh, the motto on uh, uh, many of the underground stations. See it, say it, or report it. What yeah, it's, it's say a, it like it's, this. Uh, the reporting will not harm you. Uh, and, and any and unusual uh, suspect or any unusual items reporting will not hurt you. Yeah, but, but, but it says like, uh, yeah. see it, say it, and report it. Something report like something, that. Yeah, something like something, that. Yeah. So we see something wrong, we say it. The people who are in the authorities, obviously we cannot take the authorities onto our own hands. We don't have the authority. We are just a normal public. So we can take it to the authorities. So see something, take it to the authorities. Say it. Okay? And report it. And then uh, let them act accordingly. According to it. So after making dua, my brothers and my sisters, bring uh, attention, draw attention of your local uh, MPs and the ministers with regards to the, th uh, the, the issue. Because... Uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, مَن لَمْ يَهْتَمَّ بِأُمُورِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَلَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ A person who does not care about the Muslims, he does not belong to them. Therefore, we have a big responsibility on our hands, especially living in the first world countries like England and America. We have a responsibility that our voice, our saying, our letters, it has a value. Therefore, we should be concerning regarding our uh, victims, our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, and we should uh, be concerned about it. If we don't show any kind of basic concern, that means we are not part of the Muslim Ummah. 
therefore we should uh, raise our concern. Thirdly, uh, which is my brothers and my sisters, you are all doing it, mashallah, uh, perfectly fine, mashallah, you are doing it, and try your level best to do more as well, which is by supporting financially, supporting the, uh, supporting the, uh, the, the, the needy, the victims who has been uh, pushed back to uh, our country, uh, uh, Bangladesh, and um, the neighboring areas of uh, Myanmar. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Al Khair Foundation. Uh, the team of 25 brothers there, mashallah, uh, in the leadership of our charity manager, brother Masoom. Uh, uh, and I was there yesterday with him uh, on the Facebook, mashallah. They are doing a tremendous job there, mashallah, uh, by providing the food, subhanallah. Uh, many brothers and sisters, even children as well, for several days they had uh, no food to eat. They were walking uh, uh, and trying to cross the borders through the muddy land, to the, uh, through the river, through the lakes, to the water, and they are uh, coming back, uh, uh, coming to uh, 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 the border of Bangladesh and those areas. So our, our, uh, our team is doing a tremendous job, uh, because all because of your support, providing food to them. Medical shelter, this is the most needy one, subhanAllah, every day. Several hundred people are getting treated. People have cuts on their body. People have burns onto their body. People have, because they were flying and they were uh, f uh, the fleeing and they were running away, uh, many of them have injured themselves. Many of them ha hurt themselves. Many mothers who are, uh, may Allah protect, they are uh, pregnant. Allahu Akbar, uh, subhanAllah. So they are in the desperate need of the medical aid. Alhamdulillah, our team is doing as much as they can. Obvious, we can't. We are not a government. Uh, we are only a charity organization. But Alhamdulillah, our team is doing the level best in order to support the needy in uh, medical ways as well. Similarly, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, the, uh, the negotiation is going on with the Bangladeshi authorities as well that uh, they have allocated a land. Uh, uh, empty area to Al Khair Foundation, where Al Khair Foundation is trying his level best to make the tent for these people, these refugees who have uh, run away from their country, who have no shelter, uh, uh, trying to make those tents. So these uh, 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 refugees could be accommodate and they could be given a shelter there. So my brothers and my sisters, it, uh, Al Khair Foundation is doing a tremendous job in that. And Alhamdulillah, our viewers are doing a tremendous job as well by responding to the uh, emergency call made by the Al Khair Foundation and both of the Iqra TV, Iqra Bangla and Iqra Urdu, Alhamdulillah, and all the credit uh, goes to the chairman of both of the uh, uh, TV, Iqra TV, Bangla, and Iqra TV, Urdu, Imam Qasim Rashid, for his efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everyone involved in this uh, uh, good cause, Al Khair Foundation, all the brothers, all the sisters, uh, the chairman, the, the people who are uh, on the screen collecting the uh, 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 donations and the brothers who are operating from behind. Uh, mashallah, some of them are on the scene on the screen and some people are not never on the screen, but they're behind the scene, mashallah. So whoever it is and our audience as well and our, uh, our donors as well, for all their uh, tremendous job, all their uh, great jobs, which they always, whenever a call is made from uh, Al Khair Foundation or both of the Iqra channels, Alhamdulillah, they respond immense, mashallah, uh, rapidly they respond and they support the needy so alhamdulillah my brothers and my sisters uh, come forward and inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will help you whenever you are in need uh, in a hadith our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said allahu fi awn al-abd ma kana al-abd fi awn akhi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports his servant as long as the servant supports his needy fellow brother allahu akbar so this rohingya brothers they need our support now can you imagine i have read in a newspaper i, I don't know the reality there are 270000 pushed to bangladesh now bangladesh is concerned it's a small country and it's a poor country and this bangladesh this year from january until uh, september now fourth time the country has been hit by the heavy flood uh, as, as the viewers are aware that our country, Bangladesh, Subhan al-Malik al-Quddus, this year, whole year, not even a single crop gr uh, grown in Bangladesh. Because all the paddy fields, when the, 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 the season was there to plant the, uh, the rice, the flood came. Therefore, this whole year, not even a single uh, grain grown in Bangladesh. Therefore, the country is uh, already devastated because of the flood season. The early flood came in March and April, destroyed everything. 
And remember, with the, with the flood water, there was poison as well. All the fish got killed as well. And then from the month of June, from the month of Ramadan, it continued uh, the flood and it's still continuing. I met one of the uh, brother uh, uh, day before yesterday. Uh, he just came back from Bangladesh recently. And he said that only, the, the, he stayed in Dhaka. So he said only surrounding areas of Dhaka, uh, that seems, uh, uh, that was kind of like dry to me. And then wherever I went, it was all water. And similarly, when we see the footage uh, on Iqra TV or any other uh, social media, when we see, we see the brothers are coming in uh, 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 from uh, Rohingya to Bangladesh and all that area, it has water. It's not a dry land now, it's water. So the country uh, it's, it's hit by the heavy uh, monsoon uh, rain. It was uh, hit by the heavy floods and not only once, three to four times in a year. And the whole country for the whole of the year, my brothers and my sisters, it has not a chance to grow any of the rice. Allahu Akbar. The rice which is grown in Bangladesh, it is just enough to uh, cater and to provide and to, uh, uh, and to uh, um, uh, uh, feed the uh, the people of Bangladesh. Now on top of that we have these uh, calamities. The Bangladesh has these calamities that there are hundreds of thousands of people are already in there and there are more coming in, more coming in. Now you can imagine how much pressure Bangladesh has as well. Therefore we all need to open our hearts and uh, raise our uh, uh, concern and uh, uh, open our hands as well and try our level best to give as much as we can because uh, our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports those people who support their needy fellow brothers and sisters when they are in need. So if we support them, definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support us as well uh, when it is a difficult time for us. Obviously, we don't make dua to Allah ta'ala that we face difficult times as well because we are so weak. We cannot face any kind of difficulties. As long as a person has a headache in England, he has to have take paracetamol. It was, uh, it's like us people, we are so weak, uh, physically and spiritually in both ways. Therefore, uh, we should always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of al-afiyya. Afiyya means, wa Allah, please grant me peace and tranquility and do not test me because I don't have the capacity uh, of being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only those people who are tested, they have the capacity of doing uh, so. Therefore, we don't have that capacity. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, protects us uh, from any kind of uh, calamities and any kind of test. So therefore, my brothers and my sisters, mashallah, whenever the charity is made uh, for the victims, alhamdulillah, you, uh, uh, your response are just super, mashallah. Please do continue. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, will assist you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, support you. Uh, for example, uh, and the uh, the uh, Rohingya uh, brothers and the Rohingya sisters, uh, Subhanallah, uh, it's like uh, many a times uh, it's, 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 it's uh, unbearable. It's, 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 it can't be it can't be mentioned that how they are actually uh, killing and how they are committing the genocide against humanity. Allahu Akbar. Uh, Allahu Akbar. Uh, today uh, I, I, I just saw one of the picture on the Facebook uh, that. Uh, uh, Subhanallah, and these sisters are so much uh, with regards to their religion as well, with the proper hijab. Subhanallah, one of the sisters she was trying to uh, run away from that uh, operation, and then she was running through the muddy land, and then uh, she could not run, and then finally she collapsed and she died. And that picture came in the uh, uh, Facebook; it became viral there. Subhanallah, the entire body is covered with the burqa, with the hijab with the jilbab and she is in the prostrating position and in that position she has given her uh, her uh, her uh, life back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar another day another picture came that a mother she was carrying one baby the newborn baby on the lap like this and other about one year or two year old uh, baby on her back and then she has mud all over her body and she is running away looking for the refuge in the world of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and my sisters, they are totally uh, victimized, they are totally oppressed, they have nothing at all. Everyone is uh, uh, deprived from their basic fundamental needs and they are forcefully taken out of their land. Please expand your hands, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and support these needy people and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala protects us as well 
and Allah Ta'ala doesn't put us or anyone else in the world in this kind of horrific situation. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant you immense rewards for listening and supporting and for donating and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect all of us and the entire humanity for any kind of calamities inshallah. With the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we'll see you inshallah uh, uh, next week as well with the same program in the same time uh, with our brother Rajwali. Please uh, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala once again, I'd just like to remind with regards to the Hajj as well, those people who came back from Hajj uh, that please with the, uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue with your good deeds like you are in Makkah Mukarramah like you are in al Madinatul Munawwara and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you all the good deeds you did continue with them do not be an ally to shaitan be a ally to Rahman be a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you all the best as far as shaitan is only a concern shaitan's uh, temptation shaitan only inspires shaitan doesn't give you anything in return besides destruction. Therefore, be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Thank you very much for your remark today. Barakallah. We learned from you that, dear viewers, we learned from our Honorable Sheikh, the guest, Vice Principal of Jamia Islam Birmingham, we learned that we should make dua for the Rohingya Muslims, we should keep donating for the money, for the charity for them, and also we should do lobby, and we should make sure that we contact the right authority to take some actions. So we, with this remark, we will not make our show any longer. It's the end of our today's show. We thank our Sheikh and uh, we make sure that um, we'll have a good result end of the lobbying, end of the conversation for the Rohingyas. See you the next week at the same time, same channel. At the meantime you can watch our show at YouTube. Just write down the name Islam and Life in today's date and you'll find our show recorded on YouTube and you can watch it as you like. Take care. Jazakallah khairan for your time. We thank our Sheikh once again. Thank Baruch. you, Sheikh. And goodbye for now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.